this meeting. And uh, that way everyone can get some value once I drop this video. So welcome to the training guys. Today we're gonna be going over something extremely special today. Uh, last week we talked more about LinkedIn. Today we're gonna dig a little bit deeper into LinkedIn. Uh, this is going to be pretty intense. So make sure you have your pen and paper and be ready to ask questions as um, there, I'm sure there will be. Um, so what we're gonna be going over today is the title of it is five crucial steps to mastering LinkedIn lead generation. All right, I'll repeat that. Five crucial steps to mastering LinkedIn lead generation. All right, so now, you know, the reason why we're choosing LinkedIn, first of all, we know that there's a high quality uh, clientele on LinkedIn. It's 89% of the people who do B2B, business to business, say that they use LinkedIn in order to generate those leads. And we know that the, the people that are on LinkedIn are professional. So we wanna make sure that we're in a place where we're dealing with professional people because we're professionals and we wanna make sure that we build the proper relationships. We know that our bills, our bills don't stop. They come, they're certain. However, your sales um, to pay those bills aren't. Uh, what you can, we can assure you is that if you can consistently generate leads each month, uh, that's going to lead into sales, right? We also know that many business owners, entrepreneurs, professionals, providers of all over the world, um, they're all looking to be able to create predictable revenue. And with that said, that's why they're looking towards different social media platforms in order to be able to generate that income. That's why you have so many people focusing on whether it's YouTube, you have so many people perfecting Facebook, you have so many per people perfecting Twitter, and so many people perfecting uh, all these different platforms out there. Every, these platforms, although we use them as social media, meaning to, build, to put out um, things that are of no value. The majority of people post things that are of no value. However, the people that are leveraging the platform properly are making an income using those platforms. They found a way to generate an income. Let's go over some, some, uh, some statistics. I want you to write these stats down. LinkedIn is 277% more effective for lead generation than Facebook and Twitter. LinkedIn is 277% more effective for lead generation than Facebook and Twitter. Here's the other one. 79% of B2B marketers say LinkedIn is an effective source for generating leads. Say that again. 79% of all B2B marketers say LinkedIn is an effective source for generating leads. And lastly, over 80% of all B2B leads generated by social media come from LinkedIn. Over 80% of all B2B leads generated by social media come from LinkedIn. Now we're gonna start backwards on that. So 80% out of 10 B2B um, leads that are generated, out of, out of 10 that are generated in the world, 80% of them came from LinkedIn. that is significant enough and speaks for itself. The fact that 79% of the people who do B2B who are marketers and doing this B2B say that LinkedIn is an effective uh, marketing platform speaks for itself. And 277% more effective at generating leads than Facebook and Twitter, I think it's definitely something for us to be looking into. Just these stats alone, create a strong case for LinkedIn for lead generation. Now, before you begin any, link, uh, any lead generation activities, you wanna be effective at using LinkedIn to generate a predictable stream of leads, okay? So, <clears throat> see here, go ahead and minimize this. 
can't minimize Zoom when you're recording this meeting. Okay, so let me go ahead and share. <coughs> So before you can start getting leads from LinkedIn, there are a certain things that you need to understand about this particular platform. People are going to be doing business with you. So your profile is going to be the first impression. So you're going to need to ensure that your LinkedIn profile is professional looking, unique, and client centric. I'm going to say that again. You're going to need to ensure that your LinkedIn profile is professional looking, unique, and client centric. I'm going to pull up an example of a good profile so that you can see for yourself. We can actually Google that. If you ever, if you ever get stuck in life, use Google. I guarantee you, you won't be stuck for too much longer. And I think we forget that we live in an information age. So if you lose any information, you can always get something, a derivative of it. So all I'm going to do is, is search, do a simple search for great um, link in profile examples. All right, now what I'm looking at an example of a perfect LinkedIn profile. This is CNBC. CNBC, you know, they should know what they're talking about. I'll be able to tell you if they do. If they show you an actual example of it, what I'm actually just looking for is an actual picture of it. This is not doing it for me. Um, so I can show you here uh, images. Let's do images. Because all I want to do is show you what it looks like. These are not LinkedIn. This is a LinkedIn. Nice. Now these are, these are more so focused on the actual profile statement. I'm looking at the actual branding. I'm looking for something uh, about how you LinkedIn profile. All right. <clears throat> okay, so the very first thing, this is a good one. Can you guys see my screen okay? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when you're at LinkedIn, the very first thing that people are going to see is your face. So that image needs to be professional. If you need to go out and get a professional picture taken, do it. Nowadays, the standard uh, smartphone can get you a professional looking picture. Uh, it's more so of a headshot that you need for that picture here. For the background image, if you notice, the background image is, is highly important and effective. Immediately when you see uh, these people behind him, you think corporate. You think he's a part of a committee. He's a part of a group. He's um, he's well known. He's, you know, it speaks to the effects of what you see. Now I'm looking for um, here's another one: information design strategy. Um, you know, you know, I, I'm not a big like I, I'm not huge on her on her background photo because it doesn't really speak on coaching or training or anything like that. 
But that background photo has to be key and it has to represent what you're trying to get across. This is a digital marketer and coordinator. His background does not represent digital marketing and coordination, okay? So I would not say that that's a good background picture. Um, this one here, this is a good one, okay? And the reason why this is a good one is because it talks about, what, this is probably his company. And then there's a call to action. I'm gonna see if I could expand it here. See if I could expand it. It's not really showing. Mm. Opening a new tab, let's see. Okay, here it is. You see that free resources download? WorkCompass.com resources. That's a call to action. When you have a call to action, say you have an ebook or you have something of, of value that you are offering, that is where you want to put it inside that uh that banner ad. I mean that it's it's a um background photo. That background photo tells a lot about you or your business. Now, I wouldn't use a, a plain blue one um, because, um, well, I mean, for this one, it's management software. So maybe, you know, show something back there, email marketing. I mean, there's so much you could do back there instead of just doing a, a corny blue space back there. So that's an example of, um, you know, of, of, uh, of ideas. Now, if you look at this profile, we'll, we'll stay here for a second. If you look at this profile, um, award-winning award marketing director, entrepreneur, and author, okay? Current work compass, speaker and lecturer, author, previous, this is where he worked, education. Now, this is a quick snapshot. However, LinkedIn gives you a, a, the op opportunity to benefit from a whole lot of other things that they're doing on their platform. And that's, those are the five things that we're gonna be going over, okay? So your profile, your profile is extremely, extremely important. Without the proper profile set up properly, you're essentially, you're shooting yourself in the foot and you're gonna be uh, viewed as non-professional uh, and people are gonna just pass you by and not answer your replies to connections. Um, if you wanna be effective at using LinkedIn to generate a predictable stream, you're also gonna want to make sure that you are making your profile client-centered. What that means is nobody cares about what you've done, your history, like, so this is a horrible one, right? Experience director with demonstrated history of working with help, whatever, whatever, whatever. This is just pure ramble, ramble, ramble means absolutely nothing to the person who's gonna come here and actually wanna do business with me. If I'm a digital marketer and advertiser, okay, I'm gonna to wanna to say something like this. Um, maybe I'm, you know, an experienced digital marketer and advertiser who is in love with helping businesses find their target markets, helping business owners and leaders like yourself. So you're speaking to somebody. Find your target markets. How to connect with your audience and how to generate sales for your business using simple systems. 
experienced digital marketer and advertiser who is in love with helping business owners and leaders like yourself find target, find your target markets, connect, connect with your audience and help you generate sales for your business using simple systems. Experienced digital marketer and advertiser who is in love with helping business owners and leaders like yourself find your target markets, connect with your audience and help you generate sales for your business using simple systems. Now, tell me if that speaks better to someone who comes across my page and is interested in learning more about me. It's um, client directed. That's exactly uh, what it looks. Mean. It looks like um, this person is saying, "This is what I can do for you." Instead of saying, "This is what I am all about. This is who I am." Exactly. You have to be directed toward the uh, customer. Exactly. And the reason why that's so important is because if it's not client focused, then people are going to think. Okay, so you did all these things. What does it matter? What does it matter to me? Mm -hmm. What does that matter to me? Okay, who cares that you're that you're a digital expert that has this certification, that certification? It means nothing if you're not speaking in my language. So now we're gonna get dive deep into once you have your profile set up properly, you have your profile branded properly with your proper image and your proper um, profile picture and a detailed about page and your everything your connect everything set up properly you will want to write down this method this is the method that we're going to be talking about here we're going to spend the next um half of this discussing this method it's called the link method write that down l-i-n-k method the link method it's a five-step formula in order to become successful on linkedin the first thing, the first, first, first step, getting off, getting off to the races, starting going from famine, okay? Famine to fury in the lead generation process, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is number one, find. Step number one is find. You want to begin by finding the right people on LinkedIn, the ones who could be your perfect clients. LinkedIn has um, advanced searches like no other, um, no other network. So whereas other people have search bars, LinkedIn is a little bit more detailed. And with the premium version, it's even more detailed, okay? LinkedIn's advanced search, search is powerful tool that most people don't even leverage fully. And even the free version gives you enough, enough functionality. So to do this, you wanna to go to the search bar and type in the keywords matching your ideal clients. So for, uh, for, for Carl, I might put his actual product, okay? Maybe we put in cost sheets and see what, what comes up. Okay, USA Manufacturing Company, happy, nappy. There's call, call popped up. Okay, there's Lou Jason. Okay, and I can go ahead and see all. Now I can search content, people, jobs, companies, schools, groups, events. I can post it by specific people, first connections, second connections. I can do recent, past 24 months, past week, past month. I can do author industries and I can check other filters, okay? You wanna make sure that you're using that search bar to your ability because it will lead you in the right direction. Now, here's an example of a post. Okay, now if I'm looking for people within this industry, okay, um, 
the very first thing that you want to look for is, you know, for example, the, the, once you reach someone, you find someone that you'd love to connect with. Okay. Let's say, um, sorry, I'm right, don't let yourself for a moment. Okay. Um, let's see what we can do here. Actually, from Let me see where it goes. I'm trying to find. Okay. This is more of Carl. All right, Kaleidoscope Baby Care. Okay. Let's say I want to connect with this company. Okay. Behind this company is a person. Okay, and when I want to, when I connect with them, I have to remember that they are a person. Yes. Okay. So if you're looking for a marketing leader in mid-sized companies, you might search for the title, vice president or marketing. You could also search for SVP of marketing or CMO. You can also exclude certain people within your search. You might want to exclude terms like consultant or coach because that's that's obviously not going to uh, you know help you if you're if you have a product, okay. Um, what you want to do is your boolean. It's it's boolean search. Your boolean search basically a search that includes and excludes words. So you can do cot sheets, quote unquote. Put that in quotes and so what it will do is it has to have those two words in it okay mm. and you could do or um you know crib sheets you know exclamation and you could do um you can do or you can do CMO or not. Those words that you can put between in order to um, in order to do a Boolean search. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Now, being able to use that search bar is just the tip of the iceberg of how precise you can get with targeting on LinkedIn. Um, the more and more you spend time on LinkedIn looking at the search and, and how to, um, you know, how to actually use that search bar, it's really going to assist you. Now, finding the right words to use for your business is going to require a little bit of time to write those words down and then to do those searches to try to find the right people now once you do find your ideal client so let's say if uh, i put Okay, baby care. Let me just put baby care. All right, so let's say, uh, you know, I came across Joanne Jackets. All right, and she's a potential person that I'd love to connect with. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're on step two. After you find who you're looking for, you want to connect. The second step of the LinkedIn lead generation strategy is to connect with the targeted prospects you have identified. When you send your connection request to them, you want to make sure you personalize it. I'm going to say that again. You want to make sure you personalize it. What this means is that, um, you know, you want to make sure uh, that you, you never forget that there's a that there's an actual person on the other side of that message. And if you come across like someone who's who's just trying to get information out, you will not get through. They will not respond. They will not connect with you. So I cannot stress enough how important that is to 
um, to personalize it. The, write this question down. This is the one question you need to ask before you can do anything. Before you can do anything, you need to ask yourself, why is this person trying to connect with me? If you cannot answer that question for your client, don't even try to contact them. Though. Don't even try to contact them. And don't make it up. Don't make it up. You should be able to simply answer that question. Okay. Now, remember your answer must be framed to their point of view. Okay, so assistant director at Seaview Group Family Daycare. Okay, so she's an assistant director. Okay, now what if I had a system, systems that would make her job easy? Or what if I had, you know, what if I, I you know, there was an article that I wanted her to read that was pertaining to her, to her job? Okay, you want to remember your answer must be framed to their point of view. You want to keep it simple and make it about them. So if I came across an article about an assistant director of a family daycare that got into some trouble or that did something amazing, I'd want to share that with her. So I can go online, go back to our, our nice friend Google, And I can go assistant director of daycare, family daycare news. So we could go to news. Right here, just take out news. Okay. After four decades, Kim Sheridan leaving whatever program in West Seattle. Black Latina immigrant mothers are losing jobs as COVID-19 crisis grows. This will be a good one. She's black. Mm -hmm. You understand? She's gonna resonate with that. She's probably a mother or you know has a mom. And whatever's going on with COVID, I'm sure she, it's affected her to one extent or another. So finding something within this article that might interest her and in making a key point and say, hey, I read this article about this. You know, I'd love to hear your thoughts. You know, I'd love to see what you think about this. You know, that's gonna get you a better response than trying to make the art, trying to make your, your initial con connection with her about you. Yes. Okay. Commonality. Find and mention any relevant co commonalities you might share, such as going to the same school, belonging to the same organization. So face LinkedIn is going to base everything off of your connections. So if you look, there's a lot of people here, people also viewed, you know, people who, who you know, people I, I might know. Okay. Rose Brazil, Andre. Okay. They're people of people that might know me. So if you two know someone in common, talk about that. Hey, how do you know so-and-so? So-and-so is a really good friend of mine. And I, you know, how do you know them? See, we're connected through this person. How did you know? How do you know this person? Right? Um, interest. Show interest in them. Their business or something they have posted on LinkedIn. So for example, if someone has posted, for example, we, we saw Carl's post. If I'm trying to connect with Carl, I'm gonna comment on his, on his post. I'm gonna show interest in his post. Next word is reference. These all fit underneath connecting, okay? So the first was commonality. Make sure you find something in common with them. Second is interest. Show that you're interested in them. The next is reference. You want to reference something about them or their company. And lastly, 
You want to compliment. Include a relevant and appropriate professional co compliment. So you don't want to be like, oh, excuse me, sweetheart. <laughs> I see your legs right there. Your legs look amazing in your profile picture. <laughs> it's not professional. It's not appropriate. And she will not ever respond to you. Not today, not ever as a result. So you just shoot yourself in the foot. Make sure it's it makes sense. Oh, you know what? That, that necklace you have on your neck and your... Profile picture is beautiful, unprofessional, un irrelevant, and will not get you through the door. However, if you say, hey, I have a family member in the Brooklyn area who, abs who, is, who has lived at the Seaview Group Family Daycare, you know, are you still, you know, are you still currently working with them? You understand? She's yes. more likely to come back and say, yes, I am, or no, I'm not. But if you say you have you have a family member that lives there or a friend of yours or someone you know, think about it. There is someone you know, someone you know that actually is, is there. You might not realize that you know someone that knows someone that actually is in her facility, but you do. We are all but six people apart from one another. Every single person on this planet is only six, six people apart from someone else. So you do know somebody that knows somebody that, that's there. And so using that, using the, the psychology behind understanding how people think is going to help you get through the door. So compliment. The most important thing you need to remember is to make it about them, not you. Your connection request should serve one primary goal to get them to click accept. Step number three, engage, engage, engage. See, me and her went to the same school. She went to CUNY. I went to CUNY. You know, that would be a good one. She knows Pierre. I know Pierre. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know her, but I know somebody she knows and we went to the same school. That alone is going to get me through the door. Okay. Um, step three, engage. In step three, once your new connection accepts your connection request, you want to begin engaging with them. Your only goal here is to begin a dialogue to start establishing some rapport. One of the best ways to do this is by asking a question. I'm going to say that again. Your goal here is to begin a dialogue to start establishing some rapport. One of the best ways to do this is by asking a question. When you ask a question, be sure to keep it short and non-invasive. Super short and non-invasive. Your new connection should be able to answer the question you ask in 30 seconds or less. For example, ask them about something in their LinkedIn profile. Remember, I told you that that lady, I would say, hey, I have somebody who, who I know somebody who knows somebody that, that, that lives there. Are, is, are you still working there? That's a question. She can answer that. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Right? So ask them something about their LinkedIn profile, something they posted on LinkedIn from their activity section. Let's say they, they, they like to scuba dive and you've, you've always wanted to scuba dive. Say, hey, I noticed you're a scuba diver. I've always wanted to scuba dive. When was the last time you went? That's gonna get you through the door a whole lot quicker than asking you know, asking them something about your business. Hey, do you need digital marketing and advertising for your business? What? Who are you? It's the first question people are going to ask. Okay? Always remember, if they have a company, talk about the company. Do your research about that company. Find out what that company is, has done. It's all the information is available to you. Look, see if you do home family, home care, look, Google. Boom, I'm going to get her address. I'm going to get everything. Okay, here's the address right here. One, uh, 1415 North 99th Street in Brooklyn. 
You know, I get the street view and everything. Mess around, go, you know what I'm saying? Know where she parked at. Hey, here's her car. You know what I mean? You have access to the world. You shouldn't be afraid of anything. You know what I'm saying? You need the information, Google it. You can call the number, confirm that she's actually an employee of them, of this. That way you're not wasting your time chasing somebody down who's a nobody. Okay? But you have the ability, you have all the information to your availability. Number four, after so after you've connected with them, you've engaged them. Number four, step number four is you want to build, build. In step four, your goal is to begin to building a relationship with your connection. Remember, the first was rapport. This is the connection. The best way to do this is by providing value, period. Period. I don't want to hear nothing else. If you're not providing value to them, you're not, you're not going to connect well with them. How do you achieve this? You're going to achieve this by offering to share relevant content as a resource to them. See, Shorty, I'm going to send stuff that's relevant to her. She's black. She's a woman. She, you know, she's a business. She's in corporate America. I'm going to share things with her that matter. Okay? Keep your message short and ensure the resource you are sharing is highly tailored and relevant and valuable to them. Now that lady doesn't really post very, she doesn't post much, right? She doesn't really have much on her profile. Profile's kind of dead. She wouldn't be a good, a good, you know, person. But let's look at this. Maybe, maybe this, okay. Co-founder of executive director of Soul Sisters Leadership Collective. She's not using her, the, her background properly. But I mean, let's see, has she posted activity last 90 days? Let's see. Okay, one month ago. Okay, she's not really on it like that. Five months, she's not on it, okay? Um, however, just because she's not posting in Facebook, if you're not posting, you're not on Facebook. With LinkedIn, it's different. Just because they're not posting doesn't mean they're not on it. All right. So valuable content. How are you building? How are you building? For example, if my ideal clients were financial advisors, I could offer a generic resource called the LinkedIn blueprint to grow your business. Or the LinkedIn blueprint to grow your financial advisor business. But this would not get a great response, will it? Why? Because it's too general. And it doesn't speak really. I mean, I did change it a little bit and put financial advisors on the end, but that's not really, you know, it's not, doesn't really speak to them or their top of their mind problems. If you want to really connect with somebody, you got to speak to their problems. So for example, a mother, a single mom who doesn't have any income to pay her rent, you know, you could start off saying, hey, having trouble paying the rent today or having, having trouble paying the month, paying the rent for January, for February coming, not sure where the money's going to come for February's rent. Inbox me. I made $2,500 from this program in, th in 72 hours. Every mother, you know, or every person who struggled to pay their bills or who's thinking about their bills is going to call me as a result because I put the problem out there and I'm saying, hey, I have the, I have the solution for it. Now, what we don't realize is you have to be able to connect with people Aside from just sh saying sharing your sharing your business or sharing your opportunity, P every every person that you connect is always going to say to themselves, "What is in it for me?" If you cannot answer that question, what is in it for them? If what if you can't answer that question, then 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 you're not going to get a good you're not going to get a connection with them. Okay. If on the other hand. I offer them a highly tailored resource called the Financial Advisor's Guide to Attracting High Net Worth Clients Using LinkedIn. Would that work better? 
Indeed. Right? We'll try that again. The Financial Advisor's Guide to Attracting High Net Worth Clients Using LinkedIn. Immediately now, it changes the game. This is a whole different offer. And that's what you need to understand. Your words will dictate the response. Okay? You would receive a much better response with that reply. It is specific to them and it addresses one of their key pain points, getting more high net worth clients. Okay? Step five, last step guys, convert. Once you get them to seeing value, you're able to get them value. You're able to, they appreciate the connection that you have with them. They're looking forward to speaking with you. You've built that rapport where they're not running from you, but when you send them a message, they respond. Now it's to convert. How do you convert them? Once you've started a dialogue, you've established some rapport, and you've added some value to their life, it's time to step it up to step five. And this is where you schedule a conversation. Now, I'll be 100% honest with you guys. I'm able to do all these steps within one conversation. I'm able to do every single one of these steps in one conversation. That's essentially the, the quicker you can get through these steps with your client without making them feel rushed or sold to, the better it is going to be for your connection overall and for your business. I can show you countless interactions that I've had with people on Facebook, whereas the connection, it, 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 it comes from a natural place. And it's the same way with LinkedIn. It has to come from a natural place. So, um, so, uh, you know, LinkedIn, hold on one second. Um, so sorry guys. All right. So, so step five is going to be, should be easy because you've connected because you've built rapport. Okay. You've, you found, you've built. Okay. You've, now you've, you, you, you've connected. Now you're looking to convert. Your, signal, your single goal is to get that face-to-face -face meeting. Whether it means a schedule call or video chat or face-to-face, -face, that's what your goal is. I'm sure you hear all the time. Oh, I got my Shopify store. I do about this much in business a month in my Shopify store. I get this much sales. Hardly any of those customers is new customers. Just so you know. <laughs> don't let nobody, don't let nobody fool you. This is not, this ain't what, what you thought it was. There's a lot of mother effing liars out there. And I'm pardon my French, but I say it like that because I want you to understand that it doesn't work that way. We don't just put a link out there and then just all these customers just woo, flood to it because. They all wanted to buy your product. No. You can see, go to Facebook now and look at all the Facebook ads. What do you see? A bunch of people making fun of those products. A bunch of people making fun of those, those business people. The only time that you don't hear people making fun of them is when they've already built a relationship with those people. Then you hear in the comments, yeah, I, I signed up for their program and their program is dope. Oh, yeah, that's my, my, my cousin has been using them and they've been telling me nothing but good things about them. That's true business. It's that connection, that relationship. So don't let nobody lie to you. Those companies that's doing $100,000 a month in revenue, those are the same return customers that just need that product every month. They found them once. 
They like doing business with them, and then they just keep buying. And then a new customer comes, and then they just keep buying. And then a new customer comes, and then they just keep buying. Very rarely are you are you just putting your product out there, and then boom, all these products going out. No, you got to develop relationships with your customers and your clients. Okay? So many people make the mistake of trying to do a sales pitch in their LinkedIn messages rather than waiting until they speak with somebody. That's why it don't matter. Don't try to sell nothing via message. I don't sell nothing. I don't talk about nothing unless I get you on this call. If I don't get you on a Zoom call, we ain't talking about nothing. We ain't talking about my investments. We ain't talking about my marketing. We ain't talking about my team. We ain't talking about nothing. You cannot sell somebody via text. You can get gain interest. You can attract. You can, you can, you know, you can lure them. But to close the deal, you need to get them on a call. You need to get them on a, you need to get them on. You see, and that's why I told you it's so important to have your phone number on your site, Carl. Because what's going to happen is the same people that keep going to your site, they're like, damn, this site's still right. Damn, they priced it's still. You know what? Let me go ahead and give them a try. I keep seeing they, 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 they price. Let me go on ahead and give them a try. Then they're going to go ahead and buy. They're going to like it. First time before they even buy, they're going to make a phone call. Hey, I'm so so. I came across your website. I'm looking to make a purchase. Blah, blah, blah. If that, if that, if that, um, um, that first interaction is a good one, they're going to go and buy. They're going to buy. Now, when they buy, they're going to get an experience. When they get that experience, that's going to, that experience is going to determine whether or not they're going to keep buying. Right? So the experience is everything for your client and for your customer. So that first bit of experience should be this. Just like somebody walking into your store. If somebody walks into your store, you want to be, hey, how you doing? How's your day going so far? Can I help you to find something? I can't tell you how many times I walked into a store, seen a bunch of young people standing around. I got thousands of dollars to spend. And I walk right out. You don't ask me if I'm looking for something, I'm not buying. I don't have to spend my money at your store. I do not have to spend my money at your store. I spend my money at stores of people that patronize me, people that have a relationship, that want to build a relationship with me. I swear that, I don't swear on the Lord's name, but I will tell you that even my dry cleaner, I will not patronize her that, that shop if I go there and every time they just taking my clothes and they won't say hi and they won't, they won't treat me right, I don't see the love in their eyes, I will stop going there. Same thing with your car wash. Same thing with your mechanic. Same thing with your attorney. Same thing with your pastor. I guarantee if your pastor starts to talk bad about you and treat you poorly, you won't be there. It's the same thing in life. When you think about your client, when you think about your customer, you, you, you cater to your customer by giving them what they need, what they need. It's not about you. And every single person needs that sense of trust and interaction. That trust and interaction happens on calls, face-to-faces. The reason why video works so much is because people feel like they know you by watching your video. If you're able to come across very well through video, you might think, you know, you might think, oh, no, nah, Les is wrong because there's people who, who sell websites without ever getting on a call. Sure. But that video is everything. That video is just as important. It replaces these calls, these interactions. And therefore, it makes it easier to convert somebody via video than it will just words, just text. Okay? So don't make the mistake of you know trying to do a sales pitch you do not want to sales pitch nobody i have not tried to sell anybody anything in in the last several months i offer 
suggestions, suggestions turn into questions that then turn into interest in what I'm doing in my business and my products and services. You need to slow down the sales speed. Oh, hold on. You need to slow down the sale to speed it up. Write that down. You need to slow down the sale to speed it up. Shortcuts do not work. Okay? Shortcuts do not work. You won't, you will never know. This is key. This is so key right here, guys. All right, so this is Tanisha Douglas. She's a co-founder, executive director of Soul Sisters Leadership Collective. Okay? I don't know her. How am I going to come in her inbox and offer her anything? There is no offer to be made yet. I have to go through the steps that we just went through. Now, once I've gone through all the steps now, boom, I'm at the place where, um, you know, I'm like, okay, I, I want to reach out to her. We, you know, we built that relationship. The most, you got to understand, you won't know to position your offer properly unless you speak with your lead and find out what their exact needs are. So, this morning I went to Five Incredible Young Women from Girl. Uh, that's not even her. She actually just loved it. I don't even think she... Okay, please join me. Candace teaches purpose-driven personal branding. How do we tell our push stories and service and of a greater good? Okay. Okay. Purpose-driven personal branding. Copy. Now I know what now I know what she's interested in. She asked me to join her five months ago. In some form of a, I guess I don't know what it was, but she wanted me to join her. Purpose driven personal branding. Okay. In connecting with her, if that's all she gave me, look by her website, she's liking Vicky Saunders. She's liking um, Jeff Bezos. You know, she's celebrating Black Lives Matter. Again, she celebrates this. So what, what's important to her is personal branding. It's personal branding. It's here, it's right here. She asked me to join her. So. I need to remember that, not forget it. So that when we are talking, that's what I'm hitting on. What, you know, tell me, tell me, you know, I, you seem like someone, and she might not even know I looked at her profile because I'm not gonna say, oh, I looked at your profile. And I, I say, hey, you look like somebody that really um, finds the, the personal, uh, purpose, uh, personal brand is very important. Would you agree? Or would you agree that personal brand, you know, I was asking a couple, a few of my coworkers, I'm going around asking a few of my colleagues how they feel about purpose-driven personal branding. Would you like, would you mind enlightening, enlightening me on your thoughts on personal brand? You understand? It's right here. It's right from her page. It's right here. She's going, and you need to be able to go to somebody's page and, and pull things out like that. You need to be able to pull those things out because if you're not able to pull those things out of somebody's profile, you won't know how to address them. You won't know how to how to um, give your prospect a reason to say yes from for booking the call. You see, once I get her insight, on which, how she feels about personal branding. And I share an article with her. I said, check this out. This is something you definitely want to see. I'll hit you up later to let you know your thoughts on the article. I hit her up. We talk about the article. I say, hey, I'd love to be able to get on a call with you to discuss a little bit more about personal branding ideas. I'd love to pick your brain. 
She doesn't know you're selling her. You're showing interest to her. You see? So if I'm Carl, I'm going to people who could buy my product and say, hey, I'd love to see how your operation looks like. I'd love to see you know, how things actually work. Who's in charge of actually purchasing the products that you need to run your business? Who's responsible for merchandising? Who's responsible for purchasing the products that you need in order to do what you got to do? They're going to tell you. Once they tell you, now you're golden. Okay? Just because a prospect isn't ready now, I say this over and over, doesn't mean they won't be ready in 3, 6, 12 months from now. It is essential to stay on on their radar so that when they are ready, you're the first person they think of. How do you do that? Through follow-ups. You want to consistently follow, you know, follow the strategy that we went over today. And that strategy alone is it's a systematic approach. When you when you follow systems, guys, you 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 gain success. If I jump right into trying to sell, trying to convert, I'm going to fail. If I go right into trying to build rapport with the wrong person, I'm going to fail. If I find the right person and I don't know how to build a relationship, I've wasted time. If I can't connect with them on things that are interesting to them, I fail. If I don't provide value, then I'm not able to build. So it's all one whole thing, but it's broken up into five steps. So when you're looking at this, understand that um, your ability to do the things that you want to do in your business, the only person that's keeping you from being able to do it is yourself. There is no one, like for example, um, there's no magic button. There's no magic button. It's all hard work, but the hard work is not in actually doing a whole bunch of stuff that don't matter. The hard work is in clicking on this person, seeing who he is. Okay, he's a domestic program states manager at Catholics for Choice. So if you look, protect safe legal abortion. Okay, he's, he's big on abortion. He wants to protect human rights. Protect women's rights. Experience, look, this is good. Experience, movement leader, strategist, and with over 10 years in the nonprofit sector, a movement leader in the social media, connected by nature to eyes. Uh, who cares? Right? Who cares? This is where people make a mistake. They don't understand that this section here is not about you. Nobody cares about this. All you need to do is say, look, I am a civil rights, I am a, a, a human rights guru. I die to fight for the rights for boom, boom, boom. And I'd be willing to fight for boom, boom, boom. But everything else was good. This picture is good. It's decent. It could be clearer. This picture is good. High quality picture. Um, and... Uh, let me see his uh, activity. Two weeks ago, he posted, okay, during Jim Biden, Catholics of Choice, you know, election, religious left. So he's sharing the reproductive justice rights movement fights back. Okay, so he's about reproductive rights. So I'm hitting this dude up and talking about human rights. Under no circumstances am I talking to him about anything that has to do with uh, pro-choice, with this, blah, 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 blah. I'd be wasting my time. I'm not going to go try to sell this guy a microwave oven. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So he's pro-choice. You want to stick with what's relevant to them. They made their profile that way for a reason. So you want to stick to that. All right. Um, all right, let me show you.
This is what you call a LinkedIn profile. Keynote speaker, LinkedIn expert, social selling speaker and trainer. Is there any question what she does? No. Boom, I don't even need, even need to look at her about page. Is her profile picture professional? Yeah, oh yeah. Doesn't it make you want to contact her? Look at her, look at her about number one best-selling author, LinkedIn Unlocked, and LinkedIn for students, graduates, educator, former globe trotter. Okay. This is her about. With 20 years of experience owning, running, building businesses from scratch, I've always had my finger on the pulse of all things sales, marketing, and operations. I learned early on that revenue is great. I've had multi, many multi-million dollar businesses, but bottom line profits are what matters most. Over the last decade, I've been laser focused on digital marketing and social selling. In fact, I was teaching, in, teaching social selling since before the term was coined. I've been featured on countless lists as a global sales and marketing influencer, but the only recognition that truly matters to me is improving my clients' lives in their bottom line. B2B company, B2B individuals, government agencies. You understand how she's using all this real estate? Look at all this real estate. You know who's going to be contacting her? Big time companies that's paying her millions of dollars. Look, she's got over how many connections? I don't even know. I'm gonna go ahead and follow her. She's official. Okay. Um, let's see here. Let me try to see if I can get more activity. Let's go our activity. Goodbye 2020. Hello, 2021. Four days ago she posted. Three hours ago she posted. So she's 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 on Facebook. She's on LinkedIn a lot. Have you noticed your older posts on LinkedIn getting a lot of visibility posts? I've shared one to three weeks ago, continue to gain traction with people viewing them, liking and commenting them. I've typically seen this on my post for several days after posting, but not often. Have I seen it come continue for weeks? If this is a new algorithm change, I'm liking it. So she's everything. You see hashtag LinkedIn. Have you noticed? Oh, okay, what is she saying? Yeah, she's getting a lot of comments and responses on that. I don't know why it's getting the same. Whatever. I don't know why that's doing that, but I don't it shouldn't be showing the same post. Um post. Oh, okay, that's why I was it. I was at uh, activity. I need to do posts. So these are her posts five days ago, wishing all, you know, so um Christmas looks different this year. So remember, be be a person. So I noticed Carl only talks about his business, the products that he has. One of the things a call would want to do is actually become a person that has a life, that has a family. Take a picture of your wife and say, hey, meet the co-owner of, um, you know, uh, become a person. People want to know they're doing business with people. So don't forget to, to, be, to be a person, okay? Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, so, that would that was an example of a good uh, a good profile after we've seen many bad ones, but that would that would give you an example. Don't forget to use uh, Google to your to your advantage because that's what it's there for, and um, and that's that, guys. What did you think? A lot of good information. Good. Um, yeah. My question is, if I may. Um, if we um, look into mass market, reach, reach a lot of people through uh, Google as such, um, 
how does this relate to you know online and reaching individuals? Um, how does that? How, how effective is that compared to mass marketing in terms of getting more business contacts and so etc. Well, the most important thing you got to remember is um, people don't just fall on your product, fall in love with your product, and then buy it. People are going to come across your product, read the content surrounding your product or services, and then make a decision. So yes. content drives the buyer. The same way your content, your value providing to that customer is going to get them on a call is the same way you providing information and value to your potential customers is what is going to want them to buy from you. So mm -hmm. when you go online and you, 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 you put in uh, the, look, we're going to do it right here. I'm going to show you right here real quick. Everything is content. Best scooters 2020. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm learning. I want to do some shopping. I want to know what the best scooters are for my kids before I buy. This is how people do their research. Okay. So now I come up with five scooters you should drive in 2020. Okay. This is the Forbes magazine. Okay. Mm. All right. I'm going to read up on these scooters. Now, this is content, guys. This is content. So now, for now, if I want to buy that Honda, I just click on the button. Now, if I bought this Honda by clicking on that link, who do you think gets paid? The owner, the business owner. The business owner, but who do you think else gets paid? Forbes. Oh. Guys, don't get it twisted, man. Every time you see these links right here going from Forbes to the actual company, don't think that company is not paying Forbes. Okay. So what is, what is Forbes? Forbes is content. Yeah. All they're doing is just putting out information. Where did this information come from? The manufacturer. They just read this the same details about this bike and the price and all of that is right here in the article. They just wrote an article, chose a few of the, the best scooters out there, put them all up against each other, talked about the specs, and that was it. That way, people who come in to look for scooters, they trust Forbes because Forbes is Forbes, and they go and buy this to buy the scooters. Look, Forbes right here. You don't think Ford is, is paying Forbes for this ad right here? You don't think Ford is paying Forbes to be on their site right here? Yes, they are. They are. Mm -hmm. But what's getting people to the site? Is it Ford? You think people are coming to the site for that Ford ad? No, no. it's a magazine. Reputation they, of they're Ford. They're coming for the information. They're coming for the words and the pictures. That's what matters to people. That's why video is so good. Because my one video, when I put this video, this training video out, just the content alone, guys, is going to get me more customers. This training is going to get me more customers. Because it's content. And what happens is when you create valuable content, when you create valuable content, it means things to your customers. You know, which is why when yeah. we were talking about blog writing, when you were talking about blog writing, I, I explained to you why you should still be doing it because there are people yeah. out there trying to do research on what's the best cot sheets to buy, what's the best um, crib sheets to buy, why should they even consider purchasing from someone other than Target. You might want to write an article why you should not buy cot sheets from Target. <laughs> why you should, I'm dead serious. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Why you should second guess buying sheets from Walmart and Target? Why you should? Why you should not? Mm -hmm. All right. And then in the article or in the in the blog post, you're saying, hey, number one, you're taking food out of small businesses' mouth. You're taking you're taking. With something so small, you should be able to support a small business, especially if you have the ability to. 
Yes. Number two, you are supplying, you're also uh, um, um, contributing to the work slavemanship that's going on overseas. By supporting these companies that have slave labor overseas, you're continuing to, to put fund, fund that, that process. Hey, hit people in their heart. <laughs> that's actually, heart. That actually uh, resonates with me very well. I'm telling you, it resonates with me and everybody. <laughs> the minute you start to actually educate people on what's happening and why they shouldn't be a part of it, now mm -hmm. you become you become the G. You become the educator. Well, you could go to save uh, um, Whole Foods and Targets using slave labor in the, there you go. In the prison industry. There you go. Oh, you, you, already already know. Yeah. you already know. Walmart, they all behind yeah. it. Nike, it's all yeah. behind it. Yes. What Trump was doing was Trump was trying to get these companies to stay here by saying, hey, you go overseas, we're going to tax you now. So a lot of people didn't understand Trump's philosophy. Trump's philosophy wasn't a bad one. The issue is his verbiage is wrong. You know, if you don't have the right mouthpiece, people going to hate you. Mm. Essentially, what he's saying is this. United States ain't ish across the world. Our products are trash. Nobody buys anything from us. Our cars, nobody buys U.S. cars to go anywhere. People, we're buying German cars. We're buying, you know, all these, you know, we're buying Chinese products. 60 or 70% of all products that are in the United States are made somewhere else. That's not good. So what he's saying is we want to get it back to the original state where everyone wanted American products. Everybody wanted to be like America. Now, nobody cares about this country. So the point I'm making is, is, is that it's the same thing when you're looking at your, your, your approach. It, it, it should be systematic. It should mm. be systematic. There are, there are textile companies, textile, very well, te very well known textile companies that have the authority that Forbes have that you need to be on their site. You need to be writing guest blog posts on their site. You understand? You need to be, you need to be putting yourself in places where we know your buyers are. Here, one last thing and then we'll, we'll cut out. I'm gonna show you something. All right, top textile manufacturers in the U.S. These are the top manufacturing textile companies. And most likely, they don't just manufacture textile, but they generate, they create content. Content. Let's go to their website. You shall see what I'm talking about. Boom. There's going to be more words on this site than you'll see anywhere in any website. Look how many pages. 1.4 thousand, 723 Google index pages, 96.3 thousand Bing index pages. Okay, it's all about content. I don't care what you talk about. It's all about content. You know, people are gonna come across uh, somewhere on, on somebody's gonna be, someone is gonna put a link to this company as being a, a, a leader in the industry. They're gonna come here, they're gonna see the materials they work with, they're gonna see the solutions that they have, they're gonna do business with them. They're coming from somewhere else to here. Okay, if we go back, it's gonna be the same thing. Engineer Coated Fabrics, Website. Uh, 
All right, media, industries, solutions, coding, substrates, technology. Latest buzz, look. What is this, guys? What is this, guys? You don't think they have a subscriber list? You don't think they have people, tens of thousands of people who have already subscribed to their email list that are getting these articles on a regular basis to remind them? These are all articles. This is content. Everything is content driven. People don't go on the internet just to look at the, a blank screen. People go on the internet to find information. If the information is available to them, they'll buy. All right. So that's all we got today, guys. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time out to joining uh, the call. Uh, I'm gonna stop recording now.